to make a statement about the, the integrity and the value of every human life, regardless of its condition of dependency. For more than 20 years, Reverend Robert Schenk has been a leading opponent of abortion. The abortion results we'll right in a dead right. baby. Hold on. Hold on. A fighter on the front lines of the culture wars. But recently, the Reverend says he's had a revelation. God and guns, a Christmas sermon. How can evangelicals be pro-life and pro-gun? That's put him on the other side of the aisle on one fundamental issue, guns. Who will ultimately save us, Christ or a Glock? A man or woman who wants to defend his or her family legally owns a firearm in case someone comes into their home. How is that unchristian? Well, first of all, you're making an immediate decision uh, that if someone invades your home, they are going to die. So you are ready to kill another human being in your home. That brings about a big ethical question for the Christian. And we're told in the Bible, we're even to love our enemies. Even a potential intruder, someone who's, who Absolutely. comes into your home to hurt you? Is it always God's will that I survive a violent confrontation with another human being? I'm not sure that's always God's will. Schenk is not a pacifist, nor is he opposed to guns for hunting. The problem, he says, is civilians using guns for self-defense. His conversion on the issue is the subject of the documentary, The Armor of Light, airing May 10th on PBS. Is that a, a pro-life ethic? In it, we witness his disagreements with fellow evangelicals. Don't own one, okay, Rob? You're afraid of firearms, don't own one. You're afraid Troy, of guns, listen, you leave them to other people. You know I'm not one of the reasons guns. that I'm afraid I'm of them? I'm not afraid of them. Because I don't trust myself in the moment of crisis. An armed society is a polite society. It's a Disney movie, though not from the Disney you know. Director Abigail Disney is Walt Disney's grandniece. She's also a liberal supporter of abortion rights, who struck up an unlikely friendship with Rob Shank. So I was expecting a fire-breathing dragon. I was expecting somebody I really didn't like. And how soon did those feelings left? Instantaneously. <laughs> he was so warm. Reverend Schenk can be full of surprises. He was raised Jewish, which is why he says he's pro-life. Dad gave all of his children a thorough education in the Holocaust. I can remember being, oh, maybe six or seven years old, looking at the photos of mass graves. He emphasized how critical it was to respect the value of every human life. At 17, he converted to Christianity, and by the early 1990s was a conservative evangelical minister. He led protests at Dr. Barnett Slepian's Buffalo Clinic. Years later, Slepian, who performed abortions, was shot and killed by a pro-life activist. Are you haunted by the murder of Dr. Slepian? I'm haunted not just by the murder of Dr. Slepian, which is enough, but by the other murders committed in the name of a pro-life cause. And I worked very hard at compartmentalizing that, kind of putting it on a shelf and saying, well, someday I'll address that. That day came in 2013, when a gunman killed 12 people at the Washington Navy Yard, right in Shank's neighborhood. And it was within a stone's throw of my house. I could see it from my living room window. He's now traveling the country, evangelizing about what he says it means to be pro-life and about where Christians should not be turning for spiritual guidance. I'm concerned about the NRA promoting the idea that the best way to solve the most vexing problems in our society is to be prepared to shoot people dead. Do you want to see gun laws change? I have no legislative agenda. I'm a minister. For me, the most powerful part of it is the conscience, and that's the heart, and that's the mind, and that's where I'm going right now. 
As for Abigail Disney, since becoming friends with Reverend Shank, she's had a conversion of her own. I went back to this church that someone had told me about, and all of a sudden on Sunday morning, I find myself looking forward to going to church. So you are going to church now? I am in church now. And, and would you call yourself a Christian? Yes. I would call myself, I think I've always been willing to call myself a Christian. Um, but you hear all the tentativeness, right? So you're a Christian working on not apologizing for going to church. Yes, working hard. <laughs> <laughs>